ahead of us, okay? As uh, it is good to be here with you, um, and uh, we'll uh, get a couple, two passages with me. We're going to start Philippians 3, 2 Corinthians 11, and we're going to start here, and then we're going to get going. But as you're turning there, Dad didn't mention anybody west of the Mississippi when he was talking about everybody being and uh, we're down in Arizona, and uh, people go, ooh, isn't it hot? Uh, yeah, three, three months of hell, nine months of paradise. So come on out and join us and come and visit. I encourage you to visit in the winter, um, anytime after October. I think it's got, sick, it's got a green light. Can you hear me? It's not working. It's not working. How's that? Whoa, yeah, there it is. Hey, now, now, for the record, I punched the right button. <laughs> no, I did. <laughs> it green. That's all he said do. Anyway, if you come out to, uh, out to Arizona and uh, visit with us, we'd be glad you're there. Uh, our website for church is real easy, buttonow.org. And uh, you can get online, check us out, see what we're doing. We stream, we do everything, you know, yada, 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 okay? But it is good to be here, fellowship around the, with you one, uh, around the word. And uh, unfortunately, we have to leave. My wife is with me. No kids. It's amazing. They get old enough, and they move on. <laughs> it's like, yeah. They didn't move out yet. They moved on, okay? <laughs> so, but uh, my wife is here, but I have to get back uh, for uh, work um, I drive a school bus, and the school district that I work for, they start mid-July, so we got to get back and do all that. So I'll be here Monday. We go home Tuesday and uh, to do that, but uh, that's why I'm speaking this evening. Tonight is Renewed Hope, Renewed Mind, Renewed Hope. And we're going to start here in Philippians 3 and in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, catch two verses, and then we're going to catch two words, one word in each verse, and then we're going to jump in in it uh, full bore, okay? Um, Philippians 3, verse 1. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is, what's the word? That's word number one, safe. Safety, okay? Second Corinthians 11 and verse number 3. But I fear, lest by any means, as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the, what's the word? Simplicity that is in Christ. Second word, simplicity. So tonight is going to be safe, and it's going to be what? Simple. Okay? If you remember that, when we talk about the renewed mind, now come to Romans chapter 12, and we'll catch our text verse. As we begin the week... Okay, Romans chapter number 12, you know the two verses, verse 1 and verse 2. As we begin the week, and, and Dad, and as I was looking at the, you get an email, says we want you to teach this, and this is the topic, and you know, so forth, and I'm looking at all of the others, because we start the week, and I'm like, you know, this is pretty simple. I got an easy one this time. But then when you get into it, it's like, it ain't so easy because what do you leave in and what do you take out? And I got all this stuff going on. So what I'd like to do is start here and we're just going to look at some information here because the challenge tonight for you, really for the week, is to, under, to come to understand that it's only a renewed mind that can produce, keyword, produce, a renewed hope, okay? It's only the mind that has the proper Pauline perspective about what's going on in life, whatever it is, that then brings that information into our daily lives and it produces what? Hope. If I were to ask you, how was your week? Everybody's got their own stories, don't they? Everybody's got their own trouble. They, they, Life is like a box of chocolates, <laughs> isn't it? Right? Okay. It is. Everybody's got their own issues. Everybody's got their own sufferings. Everybody, I, I asked a guy one time at church, how you doing? He gave me an organ recital. <laughs> you know, just everything was hurting head to toe. Everybody, that, and that's true no matter who you are or where you're at, isn't it? 
So then how do you get through that? There's a renewness. There's a thinking process. 2 Corinthians 11, 13, 3 there, he said, that would con- corrupt your what? Your mind. And there's a thinking process that you have to have that starts in a renewed sense then what is it going to produce? A renewed hope. Coming out here, you get the airplane ticket, you check in, they give you your your e-ticket, and it says Zone 5. Do you know who sits in Zone 5? I'm sorry, Mr. Jordan, but we need to check your luggage because there's no more overhead room, is there? (laughs) Okay, right? I I sit there, we're checking in, and they give you that for $27, you can... Get advanced loading, you know, get in there early. And my wife and I, were, no, we're not going to do that. Zone 5. It was a test of patience on my part because I don't like Zone 5. I like Zone 2 or 1, right? You get on, get in, sit down. And I'm sitting there thinking, going, you know, this is that renewed mind time, <laughs> you know? And I, look at Romans 12, verse 1. I beseech you, What? And you always ask yourself what question? What's the therefore, therefore? I beseech you. I'm calling something to your attention now. Eleven chapters of doctrine, of stuff, laying the foundation, and I need you to pay attention now. I beseech you, therefore, by the brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye, what? Present. Now it's time to take what you just learned, and let's go live life. Follow that. Okay, and what does he do? I therefore proceed to, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your, what kind of service? Notice it's not unreasonable. Too many times when you think about and you think about doing good works and, and doing the work of the minute, you become unreasonable with yourself, don't you? It's okay. I don't bite. I told the guys, well, anyway, oh. I'll ask me later, I'll explain that. What I told the guys was, was because everybody's looking at me going, what did you say? I left my guns at home, okay? In April, we had a gun comment that kind of got carried away. That's okay. In Arizona, we pack, we carry, we, we got them. It's, it's, it's the law. Here too now, so we enjoy that. My wife have you heard dad on tapes going there? My wife's giving me, mine's doing the same thing. Maybe I ought to leave her at home more. <laughs> Unreasonable. No, it says what kind of service? Reasonable. What do you, you see the word reason? What are you doing? You're thinking, aren't you? I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Let's think down through this now. And, verse 2, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. How, how are you transformed? By the renewing of your mind. That's where I want to catch and go. We're not going to study the verses because you know the verse. But I want you to renew your thinking. Now think about, we're in chapter 12 of Romans. What's come before? 11 chapters, hasn't it? So come back to chapter number 1. I don't know about you, but when things get a little bouncy or in life and things, I go back and I just start reading Romans. Because you know what it does? It bounces right out to a smooth road. Look at Romans verse, chapter 1, verse 11. Let's just think about what's coming this week as we go through this. Romans 1, verse 11. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. To the end ye may be what? A e, you see the E. Romans 16, he says, establish, stable, you're done. You're there. Here we're going to set you up may establish, that you may be established, that is, that I may be comforted together with you by the, by the what? The mutual faith, both of you and me. You've got to love what Paul's doing here. He's setting the stage for the foundation. And the setting of the stage on the foundation is a mutual faith between who? You and me. We, I, I, we have a dear brother, he is from Russ Hargett's church. He comes to, out to Arizona and he's sitting there, and we're, te- we're going away, we go to lunch, and he goes, man, it was just like being at Russ's. Why? Because there's a what? There's a mutual faith. There's a foundation, and it's, and, and, and it's an establishment. 
issue, isn't it? It's stabilizing. We're going to have a renewed mind, and we're going to start right here. Come over to chapter 3. Well, by verse 18, chapter 1, verse 18. What is, where does he start? He starts with the wrath, doesn't he? But before he started with the wrath, what did he tell you? Verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The gospel of Christ, for it is the what? The power. And what does he begin to do with you? He begins to walk you right through the issues of justification. Chapter 3, verse number 21. But now the righteousness. And he, and he begins to label. Now, I know when I look around the room, I know most of you and you're, you're saved, and I, and I understand that. But think about it from life's bumpy. Things are tough right now, and my mindset is drifting from where I should be. Isn't it wonderful to know that Calvary hung there? He hung at Calvary. Marvin will sing the song, The Door is Open. It's done. And, it, and who did it? He did it. So even if I drift, it's already done. It is finished. There'll be no more war, the songs. It's done. And where can I go back with my renewed mind and my thinking? Right back to my justification point, can't I? Growing up in dad's household, <laughs> I always heard, take everything to the cross. Why? Because he did it all. It's, it is finished. It's complete. It's, you're renewed. And, and by the way, you can keep reading, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justified, How? Freely. Oh, man. Have you ever seen that Tom, uh, oh, well, I just had the name of it, the movie. There's a lot of movies, I know. And I'm not old yet either. Mel Brooks, and he's the Scottish guy. Braveheart. At the end of that movie, when he's up underneath the gun, what does he yell? Freedom. Freedom. Being justified How? freely by his what oh there it is boy doesn't that help renew the mind just renew the thinking his grace being justified freely by his grace through the through the what the redemption that is in christ jesus all the comfort to have that your thinking process go right back to the beginning and say you know what lord i know i'm saved even though i might not feel like it today it's done it's secure whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. You know what? Calvary not only satisfied the righteousness and the justice of God, it satisfied everything. Chapter 4, verse number 5. But to him that worketh not, but believeth. On him that justifieth the ungodly, his, un, the ungodly, his faith is counted for what? Boy, what a, what a way to renew your mind. Rethink that. Go, wow, look at that. The only response that grace will ever accept is what? Faith. Trust in Him. Chapter 5, verse number 1. Therefore, being. What do you, how do you be? You be justified, don't you? By faith we have what now? Oh, don't, ooh, isn't that a good one? Have peace with who? With God. Why do we have peace with God? Why is that so important? Well, drop down to verse number six. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the who? Ungodly. Have you ever read over there in Jude where Enoch goes out and he talks to them about their ungodly deeds and the ungodly world and the ungodly mess that these ungodly, and every other word's like ungodly. Boy, look, we have peace with God because we're what? We're justified. Now, that's going to be important in the day-to-day -day life because what happens in the day-to-day -day life? Oh, God's testing us. He's got you down. He's going to, oh, if you can just have enough faith and get through it, he'll prosper you forever. I, you heard the guys. I, I watch them figure out what's going on out there. What does the verse say we have? We have peace with God. What a mindset to have peace with God. The, the, our justification results in peace. 
our standing in Christ, our identity because of Calvary. And you start in verse 2, not only do you have peace, you got access to him. Too many times I hear people say, oh, but Rick, we can't know that. Baloney, he says you have access to him. How? How does the verse say, verse 2? By what? By faith. You get in there and you begin to renew. You go in and you sit and you start studying and you look down and the next thing you know, you come to verse 3 and he not only so, but we glory in why? Oh, there's the day-to-day activity, isn't it? Tribulations. Also, what's the next word? Knowing. Reasonable service. Safe to go over it again. It's simple. And we know something. And we, what do we know? The tribulation worketh patience. And patience, experience. And experience, what? Hope. There's our renewed hope. As we adjust and we begin to look at the things going on and we know that we have peace with God and the fact that the car broke down on the side of the freeway in rush hour traffic, isn't God trying to teach you something? It's the car trying to teach you it needed maintenance 3,000 miles ago. Okay? And when you get there and you sit there and you look at it and you say, okay, I should have changed the tires and went to Sears and got new tires. I should have went to discount where Costco. Well, we don't say Costco anymore. Where, wherever you go, that's what you needed. It wasn't God doing it to you. You know what you can do? You can have what? Hope. So the next time the car breaks down, what are you going to do? Call AAA, get it to the mechanic, pay the bill, get it fixed. Trade it in, go buy a new one, whatever you like to do. My point is, is where are we at? We're right back in Romans 5, aren't we? We're not off in a lofty tower trying to figure something out. We went right back to the foundation, didn't we? Chapter 6 of Romans. Chapter 6 You start in verse 3. What's the first word? No. Folks, you're to know some things. You're to understand some things. You're to have some some intelligence about some of this, about what's going on with you. And And when you do that and you get in and you study, you know what begins to happen? Your mind begins to be renewed. And when it's renewed and life comes up, I can know something. I can know that I am, that uh, know ye not, verse 3, so many of you as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Am I identified in his death? Yes, baptism, identification, that's what the word's talking about. Yes, I'm identified in his death, aren't I? Is that a, p- a partial identification or a full identification issue? It's full. When, they were bat- when the twelve were baptizing in Acts 2.38, that wasn't a piecemeal. That was a full deal. Verse 6, or, I'm sorry, yeah, verse 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. Am I completely buried with him? Well, if I'm completely dead with him, then I'm completely buried with him, aren't I? Keep reading the verse. It's getting better. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should what? Walk where, though? In newness of life. Do I, am I fully, completely identified in His resurrection life? Yes, I am. Am I lacking anything there? No, I have a complete code, death, burial, and resurrection identification with Christ, don't I? Man, that, you know what that does? Experience works what? Hope. Tribulations are going to come. There's patience, patience, experience, and experience, hope. I can, I can come back and in two verses get over the issues and get on with the what? The newness of life. Verse 5. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Is there any question about that? If you do have a question, please reread verse 3 and 4. Because it's an established fact. Verse 6, first word. Knowing. Oh, man, i got to know more. (laughs) Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be, what? Destroyed. That henceforth we should not, what? And that begins the the issue in in chapter 6, 7, and 8 is the issue of who do you serve? 
How do you serve? And you begin to walk down. I love verse 11. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be in dead unto God. I'm sorry, dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Your identification point in who you are in Christ is you're dead to sin and you're what? Alive to God. So now the rest of the chapter, what does he tell you to do? Go make a decision about who you're going to serve. You're free to serve righteousness, and you're dead to sin. Verse 17, but God be thanked that ye were the servants of sins, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. What got you there? It wasn't the preacher, it was what? The doctrine. What'd you do? Boy, you went over and you started studying, didn't you? And it began to do what with your mind and your thinking? renewed it, transformed it, transformed you to say, hey, you know what? I got, I got a, this identity thing over here that's fantastic. Why am I trying to live over there when I should be living over here? And you begin to make those... Have you seen the Transformer movies? I remember when it was a cartoon on TV, you know, Transformers, more than meets the eye. <laughs> that's, that's what he's talking about. Transform. Move you from looking like one thing into looking like something far superior. Because that's who you are. Chapter 7. By the way, we're skipping through verses and you may be saying, yeah, but what about... That's fine. That's, that's safe and simple. That's your job. Don't, don't tell me... I, I understand they're there. I'm not skipping them on purpose, okay? Chapter 7. Verse 4. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the... Oh, please operate under the right system. You're dead to the law. You're dead to the legalistic performance-based system out there. You don't need to be performing. Why? Because in chapter 6, verse 3 and 4, what did you just learn? You're co-identified with everything he did. He did it. He accomplished it. You have this identity in that, in him, in his activity. And the law comes along and says what? No, you got to do. Keep reading the verse, by the, you're dead by the, uh, uh, you also are become dead to the law by the body of who? Christ. Get in the right, operate under the right system. Your walk, your life, your thinking should be of one in His grace. Then you come to chapter 8, and you begin to be introduced to the one individual that dwells inside of you that enables all of this to be active. Now, by the way, we're in Romans 8, aren't we? Is all of this stuff you have heard before? Well, but what did Philippians 3.1 say? It's safe. Because why? The renewed mind establishes the renewed hope. The renewed mind. And folks, I, I hear people all the time, oh, give us something new. Romans 1.16, how you doing? That's new every day. It, it is. I'm, read the first six, verse 16 verses of Romans, and you'll learn something new every time you read it. Oh, but Rick, we need the more meteor thing. Well, how about Romans 3.21? It's pretty meaty. It's pretty deep. It's pretty safe. And it's pretty simple. Look at Romans 8. Look at verse number 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God, what? If the Spirit of God dwells in you, then where are you? Who's, he's there to help you, isn't he? Okay, think, now think, this, think about this. Finish the verse. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of him. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Well, if you're in Christ, then who's in you? Christ is, but so is the Spirit, isn't he? Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. You've been sealed with the Spirit. He sits there. He's in, he resides in you. And you know what he's there to do? Nah, 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 boo, boo, you, you did that wrong. You know, no, what does he do? Well, look at verse 14. 
For as many as are, what? Led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. What's the Spirit designed to do? Designed to lead you. Now, how does He lead you? Well, 1 Corinthians 2 says that He works with some words, doesn't He? And He compares some spiritual things with spiritual, doesn't He? He works through the Word. So then what am I got to be doing? Oh, Spirit, come in and get me because I need some help. Well, you better get your nose in the book because where is He working? In the book. And by the way, that's in every dispensation is how that works. He works. So what am I doing? I need some help, don't you? Triple A. How about Godhead? Hey, I need some help. He says, I'm right here with you. All I've been doing is waiting for you to be dead to your flesh, come and live in who you are in Christ, Renew that mind of yours with the right, proper doctrine, understanding right division, understanding what God's doing. And then the next thing you know, you're reading right down the brochure for the week. You know that? And you know what he says? When that happens, we're going to renew your thinking. We're going to renew your stinking thinking. (laughs) We're going to transform you, and we're going to put you over here where you should be. And we're going to do that through the Word of God. Go to chapter 9. What happens in chapter 9? Well, verse 1, I say the truth of Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have a great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse for Christ, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are who? Israelites. What happens in 9, 10, and 11 of Romans? He talks all about Israel, doesn't he? The dispensation advantage that they had in in their past, their present, chapter 10, right now, what what, right now, what do they need to hear? They need to hear that Christ died for their sins, was raised and uh, was buried and raised again the third day, don't they? Well, how can they hear it? They gotta have you gotta go preach it. They gotta hear it just like you heard it. Chapter 11. Hey, I wouldn't have you to be ignorant of this mystery, guys, that what's happened? Blindness in part. Look at that verse, 1125. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceit, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in, and so all Israel shall be what? So what does he do in 11? He shines to Israel's future. Why? Because you're to understand that who are you not? You're not spiritual Israel. Let's get the title right, okay? please. Not that you're not Israel, that you're not spiritual Israel. Who are you? The body of Christ. So he establishes that. Boy, isn't that great comfort to have that thinking renewed in your mind about who you really are as a member of the body of Christ? Blessed with all spiritual blessings. Wow. Complete in him. You lack nothing. You're only waiting for the redemption of your body. You notice, you know that? I, I love the way Romans 8 says that. What are you waiting for? That's it. But you already have it. You know you already have the new body. <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah, you do. You're just waiting for it to become a what? A reality. Boy, that's some great renewing of the thinking there, isn't it? Because what happens? Tribulations come... And what, begin, what do you begin to do? You quit thinking about who you are in Christ. You're worried about that stinking problem, stinking thinking. And what do you need to be brought back in, don't you? Now, we just went through Romans, didn't we? That's pretty good. That's a pretty good way to, be, to renew your thinking, isn't it? Our, we are renewing our minds. Now you get Romans 12. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that, now here's why, ye may, what, what's that word? Prove. I hated math, but that's a math thing. Get in there, figure it out, prove it. My son, bless his heart, he could look at a problem, give you the right answer, but get the answer wrong because he didn't, do all the, he didn't show all of his work. It frustrated him to no end. It, 
So much so it was summer school. I mean, he just would And he's like, but the answer is right. And the teacher would say, you got to do what? Prove it. He goes, but I did prove it. I got the right answer. <laughs> he goes, I need to see you do the work. Prove it. How do you prove something? Now, hold on to here and go back to chapter 2 of Romans. Just think about this. We're on a rabbit trail, but it's only 6.30 at home, so you're good. Okay? <laughs> it's not 8.25. It's only 6.25. Romans 2. Look at verse 17. How do you prove something? Behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law, and makest thy boast of God, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent. How do they prove stuff? Being instructed out of the law. You go to chapter 3, it talks about the, how, verse 1, 2 there, how, how they had the oracles of God. How did Israel prove that they were doing the will of God? What'd they, where'd they go? To the law. They went to the what? To the word of God. That's why the first thing, you know, hey, where's my Bible? That's pretty important in it because what do you need to prove something? You have to have the instructions that tell you how to get to the, the proper answer at the bottom of the problem, don't, don't you? Come back to Romans 12. Actually, go to Romans 5. You're going to be transforming your mind. You're going to prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. That, By the way, those three stages, good, acceptable, and perfect, that would indicate a walk issue. You, under, you see that? When the kid, you got Romans 5, when my children were little, they only tried to do what was good. You know, just be good, what you tell them, right? But as they got older, they were trying to then become what? Accepted. Now they're trying to be perfect, and they're far from it because they're kin to their daddy in more ways than one, okay? See, there's a walk there. That verse doesn't say, oh, there's three steps to the will of God. There's three steps in the what? In that renewing, that transforming. There's a walk there. There's a movement there. Can you do the good? Can you do the will of God good? Yeah. Can you do it acceptable? Yeah. But can you do it perfect? Yeah. That word perfect doesn't mean sinless. It means what? Mature. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. It's maturity. Can you get there? Yeah. Paul expects you to be there in Romans 12, by the way. He, he does, he, he's moved right along. Now, look at Romans 5 and verse number 9. So you don't think we skipped the hope issue. Romans 5, verse 9. But God committed his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than... Wait a minute. There's something more than Christ dying for you. You see that? Over there in 1 Corinthians, he tells the Corinthian believers, you're carnal, you're babes, and all I could know amongst you was milk, and that milk was that Christ died for you. Could you imagine calling Calvary milk, and you can't handle the meat yet? Paul did. Much more than Christ dying for you, verse 9, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from what? From the wrath through him. You see how important that newness of life is all about? Folks, more than him dying, and that's important, but he's got something for you to do on the other side. That's that walk. And he says, man, you're going to miss the wrath. You're going to miss all of it. So what does he do in the rest of chapter 12 of Romans 13, 14, 15, and 16? He says, okay, here's how to go walk now. How do you deal with one another? How do you deal with the weaker brother? How do you deal with government? How do you deal with the neighbor next door that's a pain in the neck? Or the HOA that won't let you do what you want to do? How do you deal with that? How do you go through that? How do you, how do you handle all that? Here's what a renewed mind is going to look like. I got you to 12. You're established. You're renewing. You're, you're transformed. Now let's go and move on and let's get, to, let's get going. Well, see how he does that. 
2 Corinthians chapter 4. We'll let Romans go. 2 Corinthians 4. You want to renew your mind, folks? Go back to Romans 1 and just start reading. And rejoicing in the exceeding riches of His glory, of His grace. And just start, and the next thing you know, you know what? That flat tire on the side of the freeway was just nothing but a, a bump. You know how I know that? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 15. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace, how much grace? Abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. Abundant grace might through the what? The thanksgiving. You, you know what 1 Thessalonians 5, 8, 18 says? In all things, what? Give thanks. Not for all things, but what? In all. Boy, if you've got a mindset about thanksgiving, even when there's the little bumps in the road, you know what's going to happen? You're going to be redounding to the glory of God. But you know how you get there? It takes a renewed mind to get there. Verse 16, for which cause we faint not, but, our, but though our outer man perish, yet the inward man is what? Renewed day by day. Oh, isn't it? Last Sunday, we were talking about how God intervenes in your life, talking about the grace life. He intervenes two ways, the moment of your salvation to make you a complete adult son in his family bless you with all spiritual blessings, set you up in, in his family as an adult grown son. By the way, adults still learn. Doesn't mean you know everything. Okay? The second way is every time you read the Word of God. He actively begins to renew your thinking. Every time you open the pages, whether it is to read the book of Psalms or Proverbs or whatever you like to read, but when you read that, you know what it does? He starts working in your thinking. And the next thing you know, you're doing stuff and you're thinking about stuff that isn't stinking thinking, it's righteous thinking. Okay? Now that's a little rabbit trail. I get three every message. Yeah. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 4, look at verse 16 again. The inward man is what? Renewed day by day. Ephesians chapter number 4, he says over there that, that you, you would be renewed in the spirit of your mind. It's a mind game, folks. It's a battle for your thinking. Verse 17, here's four, more information. By the way, further explanation, right? The inward man is renewed day by day. Four, so here's some more stuff for you. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Now, is that true? <laughs> the book says it's true, so it's true. But not when you're in it. Does it? You have trouble and it's only a couple hours, and you know what you think? It's been weeks and months and years. And it's just but a what? A moment. Now f read the rest of the verse because now you understand why he says it's a moment. It's going to work for us. Now, how can it work for you? What kind of mindset do you have to have? The end of verse 16. You got to have that renewed mindset, don't you? You got to understand Romans 5 that it's, you have, that it's not God doing it and the tribulation's going to work some stuff out for you. By the way, we can keep reading there, but hope maketh not a shame. We understand that the light affliction is going to work for us a far more exceeding and what's that word? You know why the tribulation is only a bump, only a moment? When it's compared to what? Eternity. And in eternity, what are you going to put on display? The exceeding eternal weight of what? Glory. Man, when you're in the position of, of, of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7, and you're making manifest the exceeding riches of His glory, you know what you're never going to think about? Stuck on the side of the road again. It's 110, and i got to change it. And, oh, you're never going to worry about that. But you don't have to worry about it now because you have what? That renewed mindset. That thinking properly about not only who you are in Christ, but also of what's going on around you. 
Now, you have to understand something. What does he say there in verse 17? For our light affliction, does that mean that you're not going to be afflicted or that you are going to be afflicted? You are going to be afflicted. So then how do I have the proper mindset about the affliction? Well, Romans 5.1, it's not God doing it to me, is it? Because I have peace with him. Come to 1 Corinthians 10. Here's another verse for you. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. You guys still okay? All right. We've got two more pages. We're good. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. You know the verse very well. Take, uh, there hath no temptation taken you but such as common to man. You know what? Folks, I'm sorry, but you're nothing special. You're not. That's a great verse. That's a humbling verse. Well, you know what? If God, boy, I tell you what, that car break down, it's 110 out. We're going to get that thing done because God's teaching us perseverance. No. Get it to the mechanic. Get it fixed. What do you mean? I'm not, that, I'm not special to God? Oh, you're special to God. You're a member. You're a bone of his bone, the flesh of his flesh. You, you're his. How many of you broke down before? Everybody in the room for the Internet, everybody's got their hands up. Okay? You've been there, done that. Got the T-shirts, the scar, the busted knuckles. You got it. But look at what he says. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able? Well, you know what, Rick? I, I, I'm not able to handle this. When we lost our stepson, he died in my arms in our, in, in our, in our home and stuff. I was like, man, Lord, <laughs> this ain't me. This, you're going to have to help me through this. Doing his funeral, 350 people come. Great testimony to Brian's impact and to stand there and to, I mean, we had every denomination and every religious belief you could think about was in the room. And to read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and tell those folks that if you want to see Brian ever again, you got to get saved. It's the facts, Jack. It's what it is. I was sitting on the front pew there, ready to, you know, waiting for the family to be done and so forth. And we have, a, we have had a very traditional funeral. And Brian was a grace believer, understood right division, loved it. And I was sitting there, I said, Lord, this isn't me. This can't be me. This is going to have to be you. Where does that come from? God is faithful. That's where it comes from. Now finish the verse. But... Okay, so it's something you can, you can handle. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape. And everybody finishes, ends the verse right there. It's gone. See, look at that. I prayed and it went away. Why? Well, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says I can escape it. But what does the rest of the verse say? That ye may be able to what? Oh, wait a minute. I don't like that. How do you bear it? How do you bear the death of a loved one? How do you bear, bear whatever big moment, tribulation-wise, that you have gone through? God is faithful. How did he make the way? What's the way to escape it? That renewed mind that renewed thinking, that situation of sitting there going, you know, Lord, I have peace with you, and I praise the Lord for that, and i got to get through this. And the only way for me to get through this is to rely on you and who I am in you. Where does that come from? It comes from a renewed mind. Come over with me to Colossians 3. You follow that. That's why we started in Romans 1, by the way. Because what am I going to renew my mind in? Hey, I'm going to renew my mind in, and everything I have is because of Calvary. And because of his activity on Calvary. And because of that, he gave me an identity to succeed. Everybody likes to succeed, you know. We drive the school bus, 
And our success, you're talking about that duct tape thing tomorrow? Oh, my goodness. Basu. Duct tape would be a friend. <laughs> okay? You think about it. I haven't done it, so don't, don't turn me in. Okay? You just think about it. We succeed when we take the kids from point A to point B, and we want to succeed. I have already succeeded and who I am in Christ. So then no matter what comes, what can I do? I can get right through it, can I? Now, Colossians 3, we'll start in verse 1. Here's, a, here's what the renewed mind does. Now, we started, remember the first word? Save. What's the second word? Simple. Have we talked about anything tonight that you don't already, haven't already had heard in your understanding and your thinking? You've been through this, haven't you? I didn't pull a rabbit out of the hat or any, nothing new. But what is it? It's safe and it's simple. Now here's what the renewed mind's going to do. Colossians 3 verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ. By the way, is that true? Is that a fact? That's a fact. How do I know it's a fact? Romans 6 has already taught me that it's a fact. Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore. Now notice, we're going to stop right there. You're in the book of Colossians. You're not in Romans anymore. You're down the line and you're mature. You've got some walk in you. Everything in the book of Colossians. We just finished the book of Colossians at home. We started 1 Thessalonians because we're walking through the epistles. But everything in Colossians is based upon giving Christ the preeminence. That's everything. However you want to look at it at the end, who gets the preeminence? Christ does. He just came through chapter 2 giving you all the self-defense mechanisms against the adversary and the attack of the adversary to cause you to relinquish chapter 2 verse 10 and who you're complete in. By the way, who are you complete in? The head of all principality and power. The top guy. That's who you're complete in. So he gives you all that Okay, Paul, tell us how to get it. Well, verse 5, he says mortify. Now we're going to tell you how to put off, put on, and all that. But before he does that, he addresses the mature believer. He addresses the renewed mind in verse 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. And he sits there and he says, If ye then be risen, what's that word? Seek. Now, how do you, when you seek something, what do you do? Come on, what do you do for it? When you came in this evening and saw Mrs. Wooters at the table and it said $5 for pizza, what did you do? I walked right by her. <laughs> I don't believe you. I didn't eat any pizza, but what'd you do? You got in your pocketbook and what'd you go do? You sought for some money, didn't you? Because what are you seeking? The pizza down the hall. Right? So what did you do? You went looking. When you seek something, you go looking for it. Dad lost his keys. He's been seeking his keys, hasn't he? Looking, you look for it. So in the renewed mind, what am I going to do? I'm going to do this verse. I'm going to seek those things which are above. What am I, where, where am I thinking? What am I doing in my, in my thinking process? I'm back in Romans 1 rejoicing that it's the power of, of the gospel. Look at what he just what he's done. I'm in Romans 5 rejoicing that I got peace with him. I'm in Romans 6 going, hey, I got an identity with him. I'm in Romans 8 going, hey, come on, spirit, help me out here. I need some help. Follow that. What am I doing in my thinking? What is the renewed mind going to do? It's going to seek something, isn't it? It's going to seek those things which are above. Well, you know, Lord, I got this job opportunity. Should I take it? Well, what's the book say about work? You better be doing it, <laughs> right? If you don't work, you don't eat. If you don't take care of your own, you're worse than an infidel. You've denied the faith. Well, you know what, though? It's Walmart, and it's a greeter, <laughs> and it's way below my other previous positions. What does the verse say? Work, doesn't it? 
well, you know, Lord, I really could do that CEO position. I'm qualified for that. What does the verse say? Work. What's the renewed mind going to do? Go to work. Work's easy. I'm going to get in the book, though, and what am I going to do? I'm going to seek out the verse that tells me to do what? Go to work. Follow that? Well, Lord, I'm going to get married. Who should I get married to? I'm going to go seek that out, aren't I? What's the verse say? Only in the Lord. The only requirement. Now, we have other requirements, don't we? King James Bible, right divider, goes to my church, you know, has a job, <laughs> okay, you know, a, a, a rich family, you know, okay, right? But what does it say? Only in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 7. Well, you know, but what about... This. And I've been seeking and there's no verse. Yeah, there is a verse. It's in 1 Corinthians 6 and it says, Whatever things are lawful unto me, I'm, I'm going to do. Whatever things are expedient, whatever things don't put me in bondage. Chapter 10 of 1 Corinthians, he says, Whatever's going to edify others. I got a checklist now to go through verses that don't. I got verses that tell me how to answer problems that the book doesn't have. Boy, don't you like the one verse, one verse answer to everything? You know? What it. it Thou shalt not steal. That's pretty clear, isn't it? Let him that stole steal no more. That's pretty clear. But what about over here and what color car I should own? It ain't in there, is it? But there's a verse that is in there to help you make that decision. Isn't there? Boy, what's a renewed mind going to do? Going to get in the book and do what? Seek. Look for it. But where am I going to look? Notice what the verse says. Seek those things which are where? Now, did that just boil down where I'm going to be looking in the book? No Jew ever said, I'm going to die and go to heaven. You know that? David said, I'm, I'll, or not David, Job said, I'm going to see my Savior on the earth in the flesh. So where do I... You see how it just boiled it right down where, I, where that renewed mind's going to do? Now, what's verse 2 start with? Set. Now I've sought it out. Now I'm going to do what? I'm going to set. I'm going to put my mind to it. Set your affections on things where? Above. Now I'm going to set my mind to it. Affections. That's the emotion of the mind, of the heart, of, the, of, of in, inside of you. It's the stuff you love that you just can't do without, that type of stuff. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get in there, I'm going to find the answer, and I'm going to move, and I'm going to set my mind to that, to finding a job, to finding which church I'm going to go to. That's a big question for people, by the way. You know, there's no verse that says you need to go to Southwest Bible Fellowship. I believe you should be there. Every time the doors are open. (laughs) But there is a verse that talks about being addicted to the ministry of the saints. You know that? That's a great verse. Addiction. Be addicted to it. Why? Because I've set my affections on it. That's a renewed mind. A renewed mind, a renewed way of thinking. Now you start verse 3. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ and God. Oh, what a way to think about it. Boy, not I, but Christ. I'm crucified, nevertheless, not I. I, Oh, even though I live in this flesh and I'm waiting, it's not I. It's Christ. Why? Because he's my life. And one day, verse 4, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear. Who is he coming? Oh, yes, he is. What a hope. What a, what, a, what a byproduct of a renewed mind is that renewed hope that in our lifetime he could come. And with the shout and with the voice and with the, with the trump of God, the Lord himself is going to descend. Could you oh, you had to let your imagination run with that. 
Who? When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Boy, what a mindset to have. What a renewed mind to have. We started in Philippians 3, didn't we? What was the, what was the word? Safe. First Corinthians chapter, 2 Corinthians 11, 3, what was the word? Simple. Colossians 3, what's the verse 1? Seek. Verse 2, set. That worked out pretty good. I didn't even design that, did I? Right? That's renewed mind. We'll give you the renewed hope. So this week as we begin, and we begin to talk on Sunday about Anyone seen my Bible? By the way, I got bifocals and I'm learning how to read them, okay? And you talk about the two programs. And you talk about why Israel and why the mystery. And you begin talking about suffering, sickness, and grace, and should we tithe, and grace, and your spouse. And as you begin to look down the brochure, you don't think, man, we, man, we do this stuff every year. Why isn't there anything new on the program? It's all new, folks. Because what is it designed to do? Renew your mind. So that when you begin to talk about our hope, guess what you're going to do? You're going to renew that. Do you have hope? Yeah. It's there. It's given to you. Heavenly places, it's part of it. But the renewed mind causes you to then have what? The renewed hope. So as we start the week, why is it safe? Why is it simple? Why do we set? Why do we seek? It's because only a renewed mind, having that proper Pauline perspective, is going to produce a renewed hope. And if it isn't simple, and if it isn't safe, then you know what's going to happen? You are going to happen. And you are going to try to help. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to fail. Because where am I renewing my mind? In Christ. Who's going to cause the renewed hope to happen? All this I have in Christ. Christ. Follow all that? So as you look at the brochure and you get excited about the rest of the week, there's a reason why. It isn't, well, oh, something new. Give us something new. Well, there is something new in every message starting in the morning. Just as I hope there is something new for you tonight. Okay? Why is it safe? Because it's who you are in Christ. And when you rely and you, Dad says it, rest, just rest. I finally figured out what he was talking about. I got a lazy boy chair for Father's Day. <laughs> Put the feet up, sit back, watch the football, the soccer, the ball game, the news, whatever. You know what you do? I go to sleep. Why? Because I'm rested. When your renewed mind gets into that about who you are in Christ, you know what you quickly begin to do? Not I, but Christ. And you rest. That renewed mind, that renewed hope, works itself over into everyday life. Now, I'm not, I don't suggest that you fall asleep on the freeway. But I do suggest that you begin to relax Things happen to common to man. you got a way through it, though. Not a way out of it, but a way through it, and it's who you are in Christ. And it takes a renewed mind to think about the problem properly to have the renewed hope. You get the point? All right. Dear Holy Father, we thank you for the evening, Lord. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the power that's in your word. We thank you for the fact that it can and does transform us. 
that as it does transform us, that we can then be who we're supposed to be in who we are in your Son, and that we would redound to your glory. In your name we pray. Amen.